A PLC is going to read buttons, switches, and sensors out on a machine, run it through a PLC program, and then turn on and off outputs such as lights, motor starters, and solenoids accordingly. Let's look at a simple circuit so we can understand why we would use a PLC. I have a 24 volt power supply, a switch, and a light. I close my switch, my light will come on. I open my switch, my light will go off. Now let's say we want a second place that we can turn the light on. So I'm just gonna add a switch in parallel. Now switch one closes, the light will come on. Switch two closes, the light will come on. Next, let's say that we only want switch one and switch two to work when switch three is closed. This is still doable, but it's starting to get complicated for our basic electrical circuit. And finally, let's say that we're running multiple products on this machine and we only want switch three to matter when we're running product A. At this point, we can only do it by having multiple machines for multiple products, or we're gonna need a way to programmatically adjust the function of our switches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a PLC into our circuit. We have the same 24 volt power supply. We have our three switches and the light. But now we have the PLC in the middle and switch one, two, and three are gonna to wire to inputs. And our light is gonna to wire to an output. Now let's talk about hardware. There's two main form factors you'll see PLCs in. First, we have the brick PLC, which is an all-in-one package. We have our inputs here, we have our outputs here, we have our communications and our processor all built into one unit. The other type is a rack-based PLC where you have a chassis, a power supply, and then you have modules. In this case, there are seven modules. And the advantage of this is you can configure this PLC for whatever your needs are. Slot zero has a processor in it. And typically you'll only have one processor per chassis, but notice this one does have two. Slot one is an ethernet module. So it's gonna do communications. We're gonna use it to communicate with our programming laptop, to other devices and to our IT network to collect production data. Slot two is an input module. So it's gonna read buttons, switches, and sensors. Slot four is an output module. So it's gonna turn on lights, solenoids, motor starters, things that do action. Slot four and slot six are also communications modules. So this was ethernet. This one right here is control net, and this one right here is device net. So we can go over different communications media and read and write to devices also. The processor will read inputs, including inputs across our communications module. Then it's gonna run its PLC program and update its outputs, including those over its communications networks. Now that's a super basic explanation of the PLC scan, but I don't want the suckometer on this video to go too high. In the United States, most programs are gonna be written in ladder logic, but you also have function block program and structured text programming. To access PLC programs, you're gonna need a PLC programming software and a communications cable. Each brand of PLC has their own software and there are a ton of communications cables out there. Click here to learn more about PLC programming. Till next time.